Oh, gosh. All right. 928. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings for bringing us back together. Uh, we thank you for the blessings of fathers and grandfathers and stepfathers and all all those who uh, help enrich our lives and our families and uh, give us uh, examples to to follow in your name in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We said uh, we'd pick up with uh, chapter three and uh, uh, things start getting busy now that uh, uh, Christ uh, is uh, ascended. Um, the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost and uh, um, uh, it, you, know, you know, when we start reading through uh, chapters three and four, uh, uh, it looks like, you know, tensions increase because, uh, uh, things are, uh, going on that, uh, the, uh, apostles and disciples begin to do in, uh, in, uh, uh, working with, uh, the church and, 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 uh, uh, the leadership that's, uh, there at the temple with, uh, Sanhedrin. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, uh Sharon, why don't you get us started uh, with chapter three and uh, through the first 10 verses. And uh, we'll talk about kind of what goes on with uh, the information they give us there. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. Peter would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he was fixed, and he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no gold or silver. But what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement as what had happened to him. All right. Thank you for that. Um, you know, the first thing they mentioned was they're going to uh, a time of prayer. And uh, people, I guess, uh, they went to the temple for a time of prayer. Um, our traditions are a little bit different than that. Uh, we don't go to John Calvin three times a day, like uh, these people were accustomed to doing. So, uh, um, you know, uh, our, our, our prayer uh, life and everything is a little, little bit different, a little bit more informal. And uh, maybe you could you know, say a little bit more direct because it's between us and God and uh, our communication with, uh, with Christ. Um. The uh, uh, prayer times, <clears throat> according to my notes here, they're observed uh, for them uh, three times a day. And different faiths have different times. Um, Muslims, I think it's five, isn't it? It is. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So, and... Uh, 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 but, uh, you know... Uh, the, uh, they, they had three times, which was, uh, uh, I guess, recognized as 9 a.m. The afternoon was 3 p.m. And then uh, evening prayers were at sunset, which, uh, you know, that, that's going to change during the, you know, through the day at the seasons. Um, and uh, at this particular encounter, uh, they were going to 
the uh, 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 afternoon prayers, 3 p.m. Um, one of the things they mentioned was the gate called the beautiful gate. Uh, why? I don't know why, why they would call it that other than, I guess, uh, uh, I guess it was beautiful. Uh, they said it was one of the favorite entrances and many people pass through it on their way to worship. Um, and, uh, that's why the, the beggars um, tended to collect there to uh, uh, beg for uh, uh, money or contributions or different things from people going in to uh, uh, help them out through the day. And that's why this encounter happened as uh, it's written about here. Um, so, but the crippled man, uh, he was used to asking for money uh, Peter gave him something even uh, more important, the uh, use of his legs. And uh, we often ask God to solve a particular small problem. And so it, sometimes he wants to give us whole new life uh, to help with uh, bigger things. And, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, well, kind of what happened in this particular case. It strikes me that he probably was not used to getting a whole lot of response. I imagine that just the way that we respond to people on the side of the street now is the thing that they did then. We, you, know, you kind of look ahead and make sure they you know, pretend like I don't see you there on the side because I've got to go do my thing. And you're going right. to the temple to pray and I, were just, you know, I, don't have, I don't have any change right now. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Which is why I really thought he was going to get something when they looked directly at him and look at us. Right. They actually, yeah, eye he got their attention. They made eye contact and they're looking at each other. And he thought, oh, God, I got uh, it's not that I got a sale, but I got somebody that uh, may do uh, help do something for me. Right. And to his surprise, um, he, he became healed. Well, he must have had a, a under underlying faith that they could heal him. Yeah. He healed. Did he know who John and then? Well, you know, you know, you know they, they were, uh, you know, they were, uh, this is, I, I don't know how shortly after Pentecost this was, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit, which gave them power uh, for, for some things. And that was something that uh, I think Jesus had talked to them about that, when the Holy Spirit came, that that would be one of the things that they would be uh, capable of uh, to do some of the um, some of the things that uh, he was he did through his ministry, and uh, one of those which uh, is pretty remarkable is they healed the man and gave him strength in his legs, and then he went into the temple with them, which is a pretty big thing because according to the law. He would not have been able to enter in the temple because, because he's, he's unclean. Not, yeah, uh, any sort of malady like that would be considered an uncleanness, and so you cannot enter the temple. You have to be whole body. Um, and so, from the birth, he has been at the door to the temple, but cannot enter into it. So now, not only is he healed, he's you know jumping and leaping and praising God, he's also, for the very first time in his life, getting to enter into this temple, into the presence of yeah, God. Yeah, so that was that was a, a big thing for uh, for the man that was healed, and it's also a big thing for the folks that were in the temple, because uh, they'd seen him before, and probably, like a lot of times, uh, walked right past him, and all of a sudden, there he is. He's in the temple. He's standing up, praising God, leaping, and and uh, uh, um, and uh, so so they see this, and so does the leadership of the temple, the Sanhedrin. They observe this guy too. They said, "That guy, you know, he's been begging out there for years, and now all of a sudden he's standing up and he's in here. How'd that happen?" Wow. 
All right, so um, let's move on. Uh, Bill, uh, you want, uh, if you would, uh, I'd do 11, because this is when Peter, Peter speaks about things and it goes through the end of the chapter. So it's pretty pretty long reading. That's all right. I'm reading from the uh, Jerusalem Bible, which is uh, where the Hebrew and Greek texts were translated first into French and now into English. That's a few differences. Peter's address to the people. Everyone came running toward them in great excitement to the portico of Solomon, as it is called, where the man was still clinging to Peter and John. When Peter saw the people, he addressed them. Why are you so surprised at this? Why are you staring at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or holiness? You're Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant, Jesus. The same Jesus you handed over and then disowned him in the presence of Pilate after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact, we are the witnesses. And it is the, it is the name of Jesus which through our faith in it has brought back the strength of this man whom you see here and who is well known to you. It is faith in that name that has restored this man to health, as you can all see. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea of what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and so that the Lord may send the time of comfort. Then he will send you the Christ he has predestined, that is Jesus, whom heaven must keep till the universal restoration comes which God proclaimed, speaking through his holy prophets. Moses, for example, said, The Lord God will raise up a prophet like myself for you from among your own brothers. You must listen to whatever he tells you. The man who does not listen to that prophet is to be cut off from the people. In fact, all the prophets that have ever spoken from Samuel onward have predicted these days. You are the heirs of the prophets the heirs of the covenant God made with our ancestors when he told Abraham, in your offspring, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It was for you in the first place that God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. Wow. wow. Pretty strong. It's interesting that he keeps repeating to these people, this is what you did, people. <laughs> you did this. Now, it was yep. interesting that he did say in this particular situation, he does sort of let them off the hook a little bit by saying, you didn't really know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. And we're definitely leading towards, at the end of all this, spoiler, like they really see God's hand has been in all of this. This was God's plan from the very beginning, which is a pretty, pretty major thing to be thinking through and look, look, thinking back over all the events that they have seen. Um, to have that statement yeah. of God is behind it. Because yeah, it, like, you know, Bill said, you know, he said you know, Peter kind of left them off the hook, but um, it you know, just struck me. Christ said one of the, you know, something very similar when he was up on the cross to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And, uh, yeah, they're not necessarily absolved of guilt. They didn't know what they were doing, but still the call is repent. You still have right. to turn. Um, all of this happened for, for a purpose and a reason, but still repent. 
change your orientation. Metanoia. Yeah, because uh, 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 look, look at it. Some of the prophecies that uh, uh, Peter Peter had mentioned, uh, they came from Psalm 22, which uh, we've read uh, in times past. We're familiar with. In Isaiah 50, uh, and also 50, uh, chapter 53, and Peter was uh, explaining the kind of Messiah God had sent to Earth. Jews, uh, had, uh, they were all, and you know, and we had talked about that a couple of weeks ago, where the Jews were expecting a great uh, ruler, a military uh, uh, enforcer to uh, free everybody, but not a suffering servant. And uh, John the Baptist, um, looking back at, uh, you know, the uh, readings we had uh, from him, he was he prepared the way for Jesus by re, re, uh, preaching repentance. And so the apostles message of salvation also included this call to repentance, acknowledging personal sin and turning away from it. So, um, personal and corporate. Yeah. So when we repent, um, it's, uh, the notes here, uh, uh, going on is that God promises not only to wipe out our sins, but bring spiritual refreshment and repentance may be, uh, first seem painful cause it's hard to give up, uh, uh, some of some of the sins that we uh, 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 that we have or done, because uh, I don't know, you know, I guess you know, you, you, some people like them, but uh, God gives you a better way. It's interesting. The sermon is also talking about that there's repentance because in our sort of mindset, repentance is usually, I do this, therefore I shouldn't do this anymore. Um, but this is much, what he's asking them to repent from is a much more sort of, it's a much broader thing. This thing happened. You participated in this big, terrible thing. You put Jesus to death. You had a part to do in that repent from that, right? It's a big, you didn't know what you were doing. It was completely ignorant. You were just part of this thing. Repent from it anyways. It's, it's right. not. You got caught up in the crowd. Right. And got swept away with ideas that the crowd brought, not yeah. that God brought. Them. Yeah, exactly. And repent. But these days, I would think it's it's much difficult to do that. This this guy is laying at the gate. He had a life-changing, yeah. physical, objective thing that happened to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can change. Yeah. But here and now, we don't get those type of miracles. Do we um, not? Do we, yeah. We well, we do. <laughs> that's... That's tangible. <clears throat> or well, so I'm looking at me like. No, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm questioning because that is our assumption in the 21st century Western world. But I also and have had experiences of, you know, not only in the Western world, but especially in outside of the sort of Western world. There, stuff like this is happening all the time, sort of faith healing and, and um, like big demonstrable, holy moly, there's no way we have an explanation of this. Um, One of our church members many years ago, Jerry Bagwell, he had an issue with his pancreas mm. and he was literally on his deathbed for months. 
And every Sunday we would come in and we would ask Bob Mossberg, well, how does Jerry do it? Well, they don't expect him to live many more days. And he got better. And the doctors never knew why. He got better and he went back to teaching at uh, what he used to like, he used to like to call it gross anatomy at <laughs> the University at LSU Medical School. And he went back to playing bluegrass music at the Neutral Brown Coffee House. And it wasn't until he had dementia later on that, mm. that he died from it. But that's kind of like a miracle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we had a, um, a fellow in our congregation in West Virginia that went to the movies. And when he when he came out and drove out, in West Virginia, there's hills, right? So this truck came down the hill, and he pulled up, and the truck just smashed into him on his side. And we, I mean, the whole congregation just stopped and prayed for days. And he came out of it okay and was uh, and, and lived another what twenty five years? Yeah. His life wasn't perfect, but uh, I mean I, I see that and I, and I guess I also see miracles in you have a, a child, right? Mm -hmm. And the the father's in in the, in jail, the mother is you know, it's just died from an overdose. You know, this kid's got all these horrible things happen. So he goes and lives with an aunt who abuses him. But a teacher opens his mind up to something different. And that child blossoms and goes to college and becomes a contributing member of society. And that wasn't a miracle. I guess that's, I see those things as pretty tangible miracles. Now, I will say this. We don't see Bill Bottomley walking up to the guy right. who's on the, on the neutral ground and say, hey, why don't you get up and walk? And he gets up and walks. Right. You, know, you don't see that. No. I don't, I don't see that. Um, but yeah. It's because yeah. we haven't tried. Hmm? We haven't even tried. Yeah. And, and part, of, part of the thing, I think, is that we, in the, again, it's, and it's a Western thing. Is that we post enlightenment, not post enlightenment, post yeah, enlightenment. We look for empirical evidence for stuff. Right. And when you're talking about something like this, you, you get eyewitness accounts, you get doctors going, I have no explanation for you. They were on the deathbed, now they're not. And that's, you know, like, it, it's, you're talking about stuff that's explained outside of the way that we expect answers. Um, so, yeah, so I would just challenge, challenge the assumption that we never see this. So. Now, um, before, remember I asked if, uh, if the lame man knew who Peter and, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. uh, and you said it doesn't say. Uh, I, it didn't say in that paragraph. I don't right, know but afterwards, paragraph. when um, mm -hmm. Bill was reading, it does say yeah. in uh, verse 14, 15, it says, we are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus. This man who you see and know was made strong. Were they talking about the man having faith in Jesus? Uh, you have to look at the Greek. It may be unclear. Yeah. It seems to be... Or, let's see, or, uh, or is it John and Peter having faith? By Jesus? faith in his name. His name itself has made this man strong. By faith. Uh... Well, I think the faith is Peter's and John's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I, I agree with that because that, that's where it came from. Because when uh, the man's sitting outside the uh, gate and he's not asking to be healed and get up and walk, uh, he's asking for money and uh, uh, gold or silver or some, some donation to, uh, 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 for whatever he wants to use it for. Um, my my guess is probably food or something like that. But, uh, you know, 
Peter and John said, well, we don't have money, but we can, we can do this for you. And so they healed him and got him up and walked. And in the temple, they all went. And I think, uh, uh, they, you know, because they talked about he's walking, jumping, praising God, uh, which was uh, uh, the blessing that he received uh, on that day was uh, way beyond anything he, he even expected. And uh, people in the uh, temple, uh, because he was able to go in, um, uh, they said they were filled with wonder and amazement uh, to what had happened. They said, you know, this guy has been sitting out there for weeks, months, years, whatever it is. And all of a sudden he, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, in, in the temple praising, praising God and uh, thanking, uh, uh, you know, being uh, thankful for the, uh, uh, the blessing and the healing he received. I guess that's that last line is what makes me think a little differently from what you're saying is is Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit and the power to do this. But this guy knew about God and when these when these men of God came that were filled with the Holy Spirit it just seems to me that if he knew about God and he was praising God, he didn't praise them after. He praised God after. Well, that, that, he, that was his, partly his faith. Wasn't that after Peter uh, said, don't, don't praise me, praise Jesus? Was that after that and then the man started praising God? Uh, now Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have to give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. Mm -hmm. So the so the Greek is piste, which is dative feminine singular. So it's by the faith. The faith is the active. It's not it's not necessarily it's not clear whose faith it is. Okay. Um, back back to the, the gentleman you spoke about earlier who became a member a, a contributing member to society what was he was orphan what was he what, what was i think mean, that was a it just is, hypothetical it just it, it was a hypothetical oh, but it was okay. a story that oh, okay. i had I just something. read yesterday and i believe that it was, it was i don't know the whole fiction. story i don't know if it's specifically i don't remember i wasn't thinking of it that way when i heard it oh. but i was but I mean, we know that these things happen. Okay. And were people praying for him? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Don't so, know. So his, his name, he had faith, but other people's faith, right? And prayer can do that too. You know. But uh, what I'm thinking, it may be the faith of the teacher. It may be the faith of right. people that have helped him right. even through all of his troubles. Mm -hmm. I have no idea, but okay. it. It, what it says to me is the, that God is still performing miracles. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> One of the things I think is interesting about this is the man was obviously happy to be walking. Mm -hmm. I seem to recall from some other scriptures where Jesus was healing people that he asked one lame person, what do you want me to do? The idea was, did the person really want to be healed or did he want to just gather the money? Maybe he'd rather have the money because once he's healed and he gets up and walks, well, now he's got to figure out how, what yeah, he's going to earn a living. It's like the Juneteenth people that was listening to right. the news yesterday. Uh, somebody on the news said, okay, these people were told they're free. Well, now what? Right. You know, uh, there's no system for being able to say, okay, well now you go over here and work in the field and you go over here and you'll you be paid, you know, 25 cents an hour and that sort of thing. So that- In they, fact, that proclamation is go ahead and stay with your employer, but now they are your employer, not your owner. Right. Yeah. That's, as you were saying that, of course, I was thinking of Monty Python. Um, and oh, which one? The Life of Brian, 
<laughs> so the life of Brian, the whole it's horribly heretical and hilarious. But it's um, wonderful. But it's it's sort of set around the same time as Jesus. And there's Brian he comes to Jerusalem or somewhere, and there's this guy who's just leaping and jumping around, and that's all he can do. And he's like, Would you give me some money? You know, like because this guy, Jesus, came and healed me, and now I can walk around, but now I have to work, so that's a lot harder. So, you know, just give me some money. Like, I'm gonna continue to be a beggar, but I'm jumping, and he's literally just jumping around. It is so funny. And in the movie, Brian is uh, people think Brian is yeah, Jesus. He might, he might be the Messiah. He might be the Jesus. Really not, yeah. Because <laughs> he was born in another inn, in another Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. right. Our three wise men come and, say, and, and they realize that he's the wrong like, one. Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're off. Okay, we're off. <laughs> Well, you know, it 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 kind of underlines, uh, you know, this guy is uh, uh, in the temple. He's he's happy and praising God and everything. But you know, now what does he do? Uh, that was kind of the question that I, I was hearing. I said, you know, he had he had a he had a shtick that he could use when he was sitting out there crippled, and now he's not. So now he's got to figure out some some way else to go about making a living and everything. You know. Uh, we don't know how, how that worked out. Hopefully, it worked out well. Um, if you have a good story, you can dine out on that for months. <laughs> Sharing it yeah, and then right. spreading the good news. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's let's uh, move on into uh, 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 chapter four. And, uh, let's see. let's uh, go through verse 12 um, on that and, and process that a little bit. I'll, I'll read this one. Uh, the priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They're greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus, the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John because it was evening, and they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. So they uh, 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 basically converted 5,000 uh, people to uh, uh uh, believe the, in the resurrection. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. And Aeus, the high priest, was there. And so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. And they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name do you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we if we are being called to account today for the an act of kindness shown to a cripple, and are asked how he was healed, then know this: you and all people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. So, let's see. So they're all in the temple talking about what people have just seen with the man being healed and J uh, Peter and John are uh, talking to them and explaining to them how um, they were able to uh, uh, help this man. And uh, so, you know, they spoke to people during the afternoon prayer time and the Sadducees moved in quickly to investigate because they didn't believe 
in the resurrection, and they were understandably disturbed uh, what the apostles were saying. And so they had them detained and put into a cell and kept overnight just to get them out of the way. So anyway, um, what what uh, what kind of jumps out to you from uh, uh, kind of this interchange and what what's uh, going on here? Uh, I guess the thing that uh, jumps out at me is uh, is they uh, certainly were concerned and threatened that their authority was being called, it was, it was beginning to be called into question. Like, like Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a continuation of that same, same thing. And the, you know, like the, the chickens have come home to roost sort of thing. Because they tried to get rid of this problem when they killed Jesus. And now Peter and John are going around telling everybody that they did what they actually did, killed Jesus. <laughs> and yeah, they're pretty direct about it. That's for sure. Uh, Peter told the people that they were partly responsible for what happened to Jesus. Now they're telling the leaders the same thing. And it's a very, yeah, the you switches drastically, you know, you were responsible for killing, so you kind of had a part of it, you were part of the crowd, maybe you were here around, but now he's like, no, you, you individually, you all yeah. actually put him to death. Yep. They, well, they, and that's true, they were responsible for it. Exactly. All right, well, let's uh, continue reading. Um, Aaron, would you read uh, 13 through uh, 22? Yep. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. They can't say. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or preach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, to, answered them, Whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them, the people praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. Wow. Okay. That's pretty remarkable, though, that he had lived 40 years as a beggar, can't, couldn't walk. Right. I mean, the, the, the lifespan was probably around 40 years. So this is an old man. Why do you waste a miracle on this guy? I yeah. Uh, yeah, back, uh, uh, I read something somewhere, but back around 1900, the lifespan of the average person was about uh, somewhere 40 to somewhere between 40 and 50. That was 1900. 1900. Wow. 1900. Okay, so that was not uncommon all the way through that. Is basically your genetics, and you know, uh, uh, life was pretty physical, and 
hard at that time uh, for po folks to make a living. Um, we really didn't have uh, um, uh, much prevention and disease. I mean, uh, 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 medicines hadn't, hadn't barely been, uh, been discovered until around World War I. Penicillin, uh, that's 20th century. And that began all the other stuff that we enjoy today with a lot of uh, technology and different things and stuff like that. But back then that was, uh, that was, you know, uh, uh, life expectancy and, uh, you know, people that lasted longer than that, it was, it was genetics. Um, you know, the st strong survived and, uh, you, know, but, like you know, people would die ahead. from the flu or polio or something like that. Whereas now people die from cancer because we're living so long that finally our bodies basically eat ourselves you know i mean they say men like after a certain what i think 70 something like that it's sort of like when you get prostate cancer it's not a you know it's just if you live long enough it's going to happen yeah so yeah it's uh so you know a uh, man's 40 years old and all of a sudden he's healed and he's able to walk um that uh uh, pretty much unheard of at that time. Isn't that? Uh, but, this, but this underscores the conflict between uh, um, in the beginning, the separation from, uh, uh, I guess, the, the Jewish faith uh, is uh, the uh, conflict or the uh, tension between um, what Peter and John are talking about and the Sanhedrin. And uh, they said the only the only thing they can think of is this, we can't deny this miracle happened. You know, 5,000 people got converted. Um, we can't we can't deny it ourselves that this, the, you know, because the guy's standing right here in front of us. Uh, so all they can all they can do is tell uh, 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 Peter and John, he said, don't talk about this anymore. We we uh, we, we can't can't have this and uh, uh, it's just too upsetting to uh, 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 the current uh, powers to be and stuff they basically want to keep everything uh, 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 calm collected and the same and uh, go go on their their way and this is uh, to, uh, uh, becoming too divisive for us, yeah. us to deal with and we don't want to do that it's kind of what I'm gathering from what, what's being said here. You have something to say, Ken? Any uh, well, comments? It, it was when uh, this gentleman who's 40 years old, supposedly old and at death's door, why heal him? It, it made me think about the, the man on the cross. He's going to die and why save him? Uh, faith. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 I think a sign of like an extravagant grace. It's not. Or, or you could be saved at the last moment. Sure. Yeah. Right. And it's never too late type thing. Right. Yeah. But it, it's, it's the, um, the Sanhedrin is very sort of like practically minded. We've got a problem. We tried to take care of the problem. Now the problem has gotten worse. So now we're trying to take care of this problem. We're putting out this fire. It's this, this, this. Whereas the, the apostles are like, sure, guy who's, you know, everybody walks by and doesn't care anything about. We're going to heal you because just that's God's grace is abundant and not, it's not about his importance or his uh, role in society. It's not about whether someone else would pass him by and say, oh, you, it's not worth it. If I'm going to use a miracle, let's use it over here because this is going to do the most good, whereas God goes where God's going to go. And many people have wondered, why did I survive hmm. when the person next to me didn't? Right, survivor's guilt and stuff, yeah. So what was this, what was this man's role? 
Yeah. All right. Um, let's let's uh, move on. Um, 23 through 26. So on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. So why do the nation rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. So uh, call this the believer's prayer. So uh, anyway, uh, Peter and John go back and report to the, uh, the, I guess the main group, the 120, and I don't know if it's them or, uh, or uh, the other believers, and uh, their response is to do what? Pray. 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 <laughs> Pray to God. You know, he stands up and, uh, and uh, you know, so, they, you know, why the you know, people's plot in vain? I mean, you know, the... Uh, uh, the Lord and uh, the Anointed One, uh, he's, he's going to uh, uh, reign, and uh, it, it doesn't matter what they, what they say. And they, they see the sovereignty of God. They see, God, you had this all in mind along. They've, they're quoting here from the Psalms. I'm sure right. they're saying this psalm before this, you know, hundreds of years, they were saying this psalm going, why in the world would the kings of the world turn against God's Messiah? Like, how does that even happen? And these, these apostles and disciples are looking back and realizing, oh, those kings of the, of the nations, those were our own leaders and the Roman officials that were together against God's Messiah. This, and God knew it the whole time. This was always God's plan. God is sovereign who creates the universe, who made all of these happen in such a way so that that stone that the builders had rejected could become the chief cornerstone. Yeah. So, you know, uh, let's see, 10, 15, we're, you know, getting short on time, but we'll close with uh, this, uh, uh, this last passage here, verse 31. It says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Again, some more. Happen again. So we'll stop there. And uh, I guess we, you know, we're uh, meeting again next week. I believe, uh, yeah, next week. And then, uh, you know, talk about, you know, I guess I'll get with Aaron and talk about what we're doing starting in July. Yeah, I was I was kind of assuming that you were going to keep going through Acts through the summer if you want. Okay. All right. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for... Uh, being with us while we uh, talk about the beginnings of the church and some of the uh, issues and the uh, tensions and everything that uh, folks face. It's not uh, different than some of the things we got going on even this day. Uh, we ask that uh, you be with us, uh, guide us, um, uh, you know, keep, you know, keep uh, the Holy Spirit uh, among us and uh, help us understand the best way to uh, be a light and salt to those we meet in the coming week till we meet again. In his name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Don. Thank you.